All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, those are pictures and sounds of uh, Palestinians celebrating the butchering of uh, four rabbis and an Israeli police officer in Jerusalem. Joining us now is our friend Ralph Peters, retired Army Lieutenant Colonel, author of uh, such great books as Hell or Richmond, and also Fox News Chief Strategic Analyst. Hello, uh, Colonel. How are you, sir? Steve, I want you to get something straight right now. Islam is a religion of peace. Because President Obama said so, and and well, Mahmoud Abbas is a, yeah, and Mahmoud Abbas is a man of peace because Obama said so. Yeah, and John Kerry said so. And if you can't trust John Kerry and Barack Obama, who can you trust anymore? I got to I mean, tell it's really, you, uh, it's it's just pathetic. The blood, the blood to see that blood. This was an ISIS uh, inspired. I know it was P Palestine Liberation Front of Palestine, whatever. But this, with the hatchets now, this was a this. They wanted to behead. They wanted to, to to chop people up. This is an ISIS inspired attack. Yeah, and you're going to see copycats ar around much of the world, and, and that's a very perceptive point because even though Hamas is not affiliated with Islamic State, they're not affiliated directly with Al Qaeda, etc. Nonetheless, they're all inspired. All these lone wolves and small self-starter groups are inspired by the, the violence they see online. The one thing we in the United States and, and in Israel have to face up to is that our enemies have mastered the use of our technologies. They can't develop those technologies. They can't build them. But, wow, I mean, the propaganda campaign uh, done by ISIS targets its audience absolutely brilliantly. They tweak it. It's very professional, and the other terrorist organizations are coming along nicely too. But, but I'll tell you, you know, the Academy Award for Best Propaganda definitely goes to Islamic State. See, we, you know, Steve, it's it's so crazy. Washington, which is always looking for an easy answer, it now talks about well, we have to improve our messaging. You bet we do, but they have no idea how to do it. Just look at what Islamic State offers, and the other terrorist organizations offer. These, these young, disaffected, aimless men who, you know, have no prospects. They say, look, join us. You'll be a brother. You'll belong. You'll get respect. You'll be able to take revenge on the people that have been dissing you. You'll be able to kill. You'll be able to – it's better than a video game. You can chop heads off. You can rape women as, as long as they're, you know, Christians or Jewesses or uh, heretics or, or Shia. Uh, you can do all this stuff. And, oh, by the way, if you get killed, you go to paradise and get 72 versions. You know, what do we, what's our messaging offering these people in return when you get down to the nitty-gritty? We, we're telling them, well, you know, you should obey the law, and if you do, maybe you can get a job at Walmart. You know, if you're a, a, a young thug in Ambar Province or Albuquerque, New Mexico, which sounds like the better deal? Which, what, what should our message be um, then, Ralph? Well, our message, we have to be much, get the lawyers out of it, get the bureaucracy out of it. It has to be much more aggressive, and we've got to, you know, and, and let's face it, uh, those moderate Muslims we keep hearing about, they've got to step up, and there are many moderate Muslims. The problem is our presidents tend to empower the worst in our country, the uh, Council on American Ar uh, Islamic Relations and others. But the best messaging, of course, is to kill these suckers. You know, we, you know they will do anything to win. They will rape, torture, behead. What, what do we do? We ask the lawyers what we have permission to do. What can we do that won't get us in trouble? Look, this is a zero-sum game. And as I said before, Steve, the only way you deal with Islamic State, and the same goes for Hamas, is you kill them, and you keep on killing them. And when you kill the last one, you kill his pet goat, and if you're in special ops, you cook it and eat it. I, 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 very, very well said, Ralph. I wish we had more time as usual, uh, but thank you. We always uh, treasure your, your remarks and uh, your company on the show. Thank you, sir. Great speaking with you. Take Steve. care. Ralph Peters, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we will be back uh, with former DOJ attorney Sidney Powell. That'll be after the break. And I uh, can't wait to talk to her about the Attorney General nominee. But first, when Iraq President Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait in August of 1990, President George H.W. Bush responded by developing, or should I say deploying, U.S. forces. And uh, why don't we uh, take a look at uh, that? Because he deployed uh, the forces and officially entered the U.S. into the Gulf War back then. So here is this hour's American Moment.
Since the beginning annals of history, the Middle East has always been a center for conflicts, intrigue, and war. So it was again on August 2nd, 1990, when Iraq's then President Saddam Hussein ordered his armies to invade Kuwait. His objective? The oil-rich fields of Rumalia. It took five months of failed negotiations before the United States and its European and Arab allies abandoned their diplomatic efforts and initiated military actions against the invading Iraqi forces. On the evening of January 16, 1991, President George Herbert Walker Bush addressed the nation. Just two hours ago, Allied Air Forces began an attack on military targets in Iraq and Kuwait. These attacks continue as I speak. The largest Allied coalition since World War II was amassed under the command of General Norman Schwarzkopf. Known as Storm and Norman, he led over a half million troops with military forces primarily from the United States, Britain, and Saudi Arabia, along with logistical and financial support from an additional 31 nations. President Bush was quick to make known the Allies' clear and limited objectives. Known to history as either the Persian Gulf War or First Gulf War, it marked the beginning of frontline reporting by embedded news reporters from around the world, providing their viewers with live pictures of ongoing battlefield actions. Anticipating the Arab nations opposing him would refuse to fight alongside their arch enemy, the Israelis. Hussein launched Scud missile attacks against Israel, hoping to draw them into the conflict. But the U.S. quickly deployed to Israel the new Patriot missile interceptors, which for the first time were used successfully on the battlefield. In the end, Israel stood back. Within 100 hours of the ground forces launching their assault, the war was over. But not before Saddam Hussein had ordered the destruction of the very oil fields he sought. One week following the cessation of fighting, President George Herbert Walker Bush addresses Congress and the nation. As president, I can report to the nation, aggression is defeated, the war is over. For Newsmax TV, I'm Bill Curtis, and this is an American moment.